question 2 from section 2 of the higher physics exam of 2018. An internet shopping company is planning to use drones to deliver packages. During a test, the drone is hovering at a constant height above the ground. The mass of the drone is 5.50 kilograms and the mass of the package is 1.25 kilograms. Determine the upward force produced by the drone. So it's a force question and we have to draw in our force diagram on the drone and the package. And that's what we call a free body diagram. So the first thing we do is represent the drone and the package by a dot. So we make a big large dot to represent the drone, the drone and the package. And then we've got to put in vectors, which are really arrows, showing the forces acting on the drone and the package. Well, obviously the first force is the force acting downwards, and that's the weight, the combined weight of the package and the drone. Now the big clue is that it's hovering and it's a constant height above the ground. So it's not moving. So we can say that the, there's no unbalanced force acting on the package and the drone. And this upward force, or as we shall call the lift force, will be exactly equal to the weight force acting down the way. And you can see that from that diagram there. So no unbalanced force acting on the package and the drone means that the weight is counteracted by the lift acting upwards and both have got the same size, same magnitude. Because the unbalanced force in this situation is going to be equal to zero. And if the unbalanced force is equal to zero, we can say that the lift force acting upwards is equal to the weight acting downwards. Now we know how to calculate the weight of an object. The weight of an object is just simply equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the gravitational field strength. And for this planet, the gravitational field strength is given as 9.8 newtons for every kilogram. So we put in the numbers to find the weight. The weight is equal to, and you have to be careful here, because we have to take the combined mass of the package and the drone. So the combined mass will be 5.50 kilograms plus 1.25 kilograms. And we've got to multiply that by 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So when we work that out on our calculator, we get an answer of 66.2 newtons. 66.2 newtons. So the upward force will have to be exactly 66.2 newtons as well. So the upward force L, in order for the drone and the package to be stationary or not moving, the upward force, which we've called L, will be equal to 66.2 newtons. Part 2 of question 2 of the 2018 Higher Physics Examination. The package is now lowered using a motor and a cable. The battery supplies 12 volts across the motor. The resistance of the motor is 9.6 ohms. You've got to calculate the power dissipated by the motor. So here we have an electrical question turning up in a dynamics part of the exam, which can happen. The first thing we've got to work out is what is exactly does power dissipated mean? Well, the word dissipate means gradually wasted or lost. Something is gradually wasted away or lost. In terms of power dissipated, we can think of it as the following. Power dissipated means energy lost per second, or we can obviously say energy changed per second, because the electrical energy being supplied to the motor has been changed into movement energy, and not all that energy is changed into movement energy. Some of it, in fact, is changed into heat and is also changed into into uh, into sound as well. So what we want to try and find out in this question is the power dissipated by the motor. So it's really calculating the power. Now, we go immediately to our higher physics relation sheet, which we see here 
a, a part of it here. I'm going to look for the power equations. Look down the higher physics relationship sheet and there are the power equations there. We have the following. We have P equals VI, that's voltage times current. Or we could have P equal to I squared R, that's current squared times the resistance. Or we could have P equals V squared all divided by R. Now we're looking for a power equation which has got to have voltage in it and got to have resistance in it. So P equals V squared divided by R is the one we're going to use. So we just have to plug in the numbers. V squared is going to be 12 squared divided by the resistance, 9.6. And when we do that calculation, we end up with 15. Now, what is power dissipated measured in? Well, energy change per second, joules per second, and that's going to be the watt, W. So, the power dissipated by the motor will be 15 watts. Question 2, Part 3. While the package is being lowered, the cable breaks. The upward force produced by the drone remains constant. Describe the vertical motion of the drone immediately after the cable breaks. Justify your answer. Now, in your mind's eye, you should have this diagram. Slightly different from the last force diagram, but you can see I've broken it down to give me the two weights which is acting downwards. The weight of the drone and the weight of the package. And these two forces added together will be exactly equal and opposite to the lift force which is acting upwards. Now, if that package breaks loose, you're going to have less weight acting downwards. And the lift force will therefore be bigger than the weight of the drone, which will therefore produce an upwards acceleration. So what's going to happen to the drone is the drone will immediately accelerate upwards because there is now an unbalanced force acting on the drone. To justify your answer, you can draw that diagram and explain it as follows. Reduced mass, that's the package falling off, will result in a smaller downward force acting on the drone. That means a smaller weight. And we can see that from the diagram. That will mean an unbalanced force acting upwards because the lift force will now be bigger than the weight of the drone acting downwards. The drone will have an upward acceleration because of this. So you can answer first of all by saying the drone will have an upward acceleration and then repeat the argument which you've just heard. Question 2b. To carry a package with a greater mass, two drones are used as shown. The drones are hovering at a constant height above the ground and the mass of the package suspended from the two drones is 3.4 kilograms. And we've got to determine the tension in each cable. Now, what I'm going to do is let a dot represent the package, put it in an XY axis and draw the force vectors acting on the actual package itself. It's called a free body diagram and it looks like this. You can see that on the dot, which represents the package, we have the weight acting vertically downwards and we have the two tension forces caused by the cables acting at 35 degrees to the vertical. Now, what we want to do is to find the resultant force, the resultant upward force caused by the two cables, if tension from the two cables. And to do that, we can rearrange those two tension vectors such that one of the vectors' tails will touch the other vector's nose, or we can draw a parallelogram round two uh, tension vectors. On this screen, I'll just slide the vector, this tension vector, such that the tail touches the nose of the other tension vector, and when I do that, I have got the resultant force due to two tensions easily shown in the diagram. There is the resultant force as shown there. And you can see from the diagram that the upward force L caused by the two tensions exactly balances the weight acting downwards.
because also the package is suspended uh, below and it's not moving, it's hovering at a constant height. So therefore the upward force due to the two tensions, the resultant force L, will be balanced by the weight. So we can write that down at the top here. We can say that L, the upward force, is exactly equal to the weight. But we're going to try and find out what the value of the tension force actually is. But to do that, we must look at the components of the tension force. Now, the tension force on the left, we can put in its Y component like that. And the tension force on the right, we can break that into its Y component, and it looks like that. But remember, vectors must be added nose to tail. So I must take one of them and slide it up so that it's going to be up here like that. And you can see that the resultant force, upward, resultant upward force L, is actually made up of two Y components of the tension, which are both equal. So I also can write down then that the upward force L is going to be equal to 2 times the Y component of the tension. Now I know that the situation is balanced because the package is not moving, it's hovering. So therefore I can say then that the weight acting down the way is equal to 2 times Ty, 2 times the Y component. So now in a position to work out the Y component of the tension, it's just really equal to half the weight. Now you could have got that from a diagram, but I think you prefer to look and see the overall force diagram, the free body diagram acting on the, the package to see the whole picture. So, if I just take the weights and divide that by 2, I'll get the Y component of the tension. And that's what I'm after in order to find the tension itself. What is the weight? Well, the weight will work out to be equal to mg. We know the mass of the package is 3.4. And we know that the value of g, the gravitational field strength, is 9.8. And therefore, the weight acting downwards has got to be 33.3 .3 newtons. So, I know then that the Y component of the tension has got to be half of that. So, 33.3 .3 newtons divided by 2. And the Y component has got to be equal to a value of 16.7. 16.7 newtons. Now, now that I've got the Y components, I can easily find now the tension, the actual value of the tension, because if I look very close, you can see a small triangle made up of the tension force, the Y component of the tension, and the angle in between. What I'll do is I'll draw this separately, and that's the little triangle which I'm talking about. Now, if I take that away, somewhere I can work it out, like maybe over here, then you can see that to work out the tension, I can just simply do a little bit of trig on it because the triangle is a right angle triangle, and therefore I can use the following trig relationship. Cos of 35 degrees is equal to the adjacent side of the triangle, which is Ty divided by the tension. Cross multiply, tension times cos, 35 degrees, should equal Ty. And therefore the actual tension which we're looking for is going to be equal to Ty divided by cos of 35 degrees. Now therefore, the tension, I'll come down here and work this last bit out, the tension will be equal to Ty, which we worked out, 16.7 newtons, divided by cos 35 degrees, and that gives us the value of the tension equal to 20.3, if we do that in our calculator, 20.3 newtons, or 20 newtons, the two significant figures.